now to implement uh, enter process communication we just established that there are two kinds of processes server and client and we will write our code in two separate pieces we will write the code for server separately and write the code for client separately so we will have actually two programs two files of code right okay now let's start with the server side let's uh, start the server side programming first so to implement the code of the server program the server process there are actually five steps so let's see them uh, i have broken down the implementation in five steps so that it's easy for you okay before starting those steps first of all let's see this line right here server should always start before the client make sure that client doesn't start before server you always have to start the server before the client so make sure of this now the first thing is the first step is create the shared memory and by the way these five steps are really important and if you get hold of these the rest of the uh, topic is very very easy if you understand this thoroughly okay the first thing is create shared shared memory and for this we use the system call shm dot so this is the call uh, which creates shared memory for us the second step is attach that shared memory with the processes address space or the server address space so actually what happens in the ram is when um, the the first step is done so so this step when this step the creating shared memory step is done some memory is created in the ram somewhere right Uh, also let's say this is your processes address space right this is your process and this is that shared memory okay so when the first step is done that memory is created but this memory is still not attached with this process so it is created but it's not attached so the second step actually attaches this shared memory with this processes address space so when second step is executed this memory is attached to this process right up uh, because a pointer is established a connection is there third step is do our work that is we whatever we want to do in the server we want to write something in the shared memory we want to read something or whatever so we have to do our work and then we have to wait for the client's completion so third step is further subdivided into two steps step number 1 do whatever we want there and step number 2 after completing our work we have to wait for the client to complete we have to wait for the client's signal the client will signal us that i have done my work and then we will move forward so this is that point where we will wait for the client how will we do it we will see it in a little while okay step number 4 detach the shared memory so when we detach the shared memory using this system call shmdt so when we detach the shared memory using the system call shmdt this pointer connection is broken down and after words the fifth step is remove the shared memory using the system call shm ctl and uh, using this call this shared memory is deleted right these are the five steps of the server so now let's look at the client side programming and they are almost the same steps except a few changes so the first step is ask for the shared memory with the same key and using the same uh, system call shm get now focus on the word ask here so in the server side programming what i wrote was create shared memory but in the client side programming i have written ask for shared memory so only the server creates the shared memory client doesn't create it client never creates the shared memory so make sure of this thing the second step is attach the client's address space with the shared memory using the same call shm get so this process uh, this um this step is exactly the same the third step is again further subdivided into two steps the first one is use the shared memory and second one is signal the server that we are done so use the shared memory, shared memory that means write in the shared memory read or whatever we want to do do that and afterwards signal the server process that we have done over there fourth process uh, fourth step is exactly the same it is detach the shared memory with the same call shm pt and the fifth step is exit actually return zero so actually this is no step i just wrote it to um make equal five steps so so as there are five steps of server so it's easy to remember five steps of client just just because of that 
but why there is no fifth step? Why the client is not deleting the shared memory? So look at the server side programming. We in the fifth step we were removing shared memory, deleting shared memory. But in the client side programming, we are not doing that. Why? Because the client did not create the shared memory. So only server can create the shared memory and remove or delete the shared memory. So only server can do that. Since server created the shared memory, only it can delete it. And since client didn't create the shared memory, it cannot delete it either. So keep that in mind. And these, uh, this is a really important thing. Now let's look at these steps in detail. First of all, uh, before looking at the steps in detail, first of all, let's see how do we make a key. So remember, we talked about a key that um, a shared memory is created using a key and only that process can access uh, that shared memory which has that key. So how do we create a key? So uh, we can create a key in three different ways. First of all, the data type of key is key underscore T. This is the data type of a key. Now, uh, let's say we declare a key with the name K. So that's our key. So the first way, the first method, this one, to declare, uh, to make a key, to initialize a key is K equals to, let's say, 1, 2, 3. You see? So this is our password. Not, not a very good approach, but this is the simplest approach that there is that we can use. The second uh, method to generate or make a key is through this function aptoc. So you can what you can do is you can write k e equals to f p o k and this function takes two arguments. This is actually small k. This uh, function takes two arguments. The first one is a string. So you can write any string here. And the second argument is any integer. Let's say we write one here. And based on these two uh, parameters, it will generate it has some algorithm in it it will generate some unique key based on these two parameters so whenever these two parameters are kept same the key that that will be generated will always be the same so what we will do is we will use the same set of parameters in the server and the client so that the key that is generated is same the third step is uh, in the third step a unique key is generated through this flag ipc private so we will use this flag IPC private and by using this a private key is generated. So this key is so private that even you cannot um, see out it or, or print after it. You cannot even print it on screen to see what that key is. So if this key is this private that you can't even see it or you don't even know it, then what's the purpose of this, uh, this key? Uh, by the way, ignore this for now. I'll explain this in the next slide. So what's the purpose of this key? If it's, if, if it's private and you can't even see it, how will you give it to the other process if you don't know it yourself, right? So there is a scenario in which you can use it and there is actually only one scenario in which this key is used and that scenario is parent and child communication. So when you fork, uh, you, when you perform forking and when you uh, make a child from a parent, in that case, um, IPC private is used. In that only in that case, uh, this key works. Other than that, it doesn't work. And why does it work in that case? Because in the case of parent and child, you must remember that we when we perform fork, this is a system called fork. When we do that, and this is a parent process. So after forking, parent duplicates and uh, it becomes a child. So so now after duplicating, um, there is a new process which is, which is the child process. So the child process is the, is the exact copy of the parent process. So since it's the exact copy of the parent process, the key uh, which is generated through IPC private is saved in this process. So when a duplicate is created, that key is copied to the other process too. So in this way, that key is given to the uh, other process too. And what we actually do is we make the parent process as server and we make the client, uh, the, the child process as client usually in this case. That is what we do. So, so in this communication, parent-child communication, IPC private is valid. Now let's look at the steps. The first step was creating or requesting for a shared memory. And the function call is shmget. Let's see how will we use it. So the function call shmget, it takes three parameters. Let's see what they are. The first 
parameter is the key. So let's say we declared the key and it has the name k. So it will take the key. The first parameter is key. The second parameter is size of the memory. So let's say 100 bytes. It takes the size of the uh, memory in bytes. The third parameter are the flags. So we use two flags. First flag is IPC for intercross communication underscore create. And this is the spelling of the flag. Make sure that's how you write it. It doesn't have an E in it. That's the spelling. So I've not written this by mistake. This is the actual spelling. And then we use another uh, flag after writing this pipe operator. We write the pipe operator and we use the another flag which is 0, triple 6. Now what's the purpose of these flags? So this flag IPC underscore create is for creating the shared memory, right? So this flag will tell the operating system to create the shared memory. And the next flag 0, triple 6 is the permission flag. So this flag, flag so this flag gives the read and write permission uh, to the process, the read and write permission of the shared memory to the process. Now this call uh, SHM returns a shared memory ID which we use in the other call. So keep this in mind, it returns uh, an integer variable which is shared memory ID. So this variable is actually integer, an integer variable which is shared memory ID. Okay, one more thing. This call which I have made right here is used for server-side programming. So this call is for server-side programming. Now, for the client-side programming, which call is used? So the same call is used but with a few changes. So what are the changes? They are, we will write shm get and we will write the, we will write the key, the size. But there is one thing that we will not write and that is this flag. Since we do not want to create the memory, server will create the memory, the client will not create it. So we want to use this flag. So this flag will be excluded, rest of it is exactly the same and it will return some shared memory ID. So this is how you do it. So this is the difference between server-side programming and client-side programming of this system called SHM get. Now let's see it properly. This is the example. Um, this is the key. This is the size. I have just, what I've done is I've taken the size of integer and multiplied it with four. So it's four into size of int. And then this is the IPC underscore create flag and the permission flag. Now SHM get returns negative value in case it is failed, in case you have done some, something wrong and the shared memory is not created. But if the shared memory is successfully created, it returns some positive number, which is actually the shared memory ID. Now look, let's look at the second step, which is attaching shared memory. So to attach shared memory, the function, uh, the system call that we have is SHM AT. So how do we use it? How do we use it? SHM AT and then it takes three arguments and we are only interested in the first argument that is shared memory ID. The shared memory ID which was returned by the SHM get call is passed here. And afterwards there is a pointer but we keep it now. So and we are not discussing it right now to keep things simple. This is how we will do it. Now this shared memory attached SHM AT call returns a pointer. So what it actually do, it returns the address of the shared memory, right? So we store it in a pointer. Let's call it SHM PTR. And its data type is, if we are making integer memory, its data type is integer pointer, any pointer, right? So uh, what, what does it do? Suppose this is your shared memory. Imagine it in the form of um, blocks or a grid. That's how that's how locations are in the RAM. So SHM AT call actually returns the first, uh, the address of first index of the shared memory. That's what it does. The address of first index of the shared memory is returned to the pointer SHM PTR. It is saved in this point. Okay, now let's look at it once more. So this is the call, which is what I, I just wrote in the previous slide. And um, uh, SHM AT returns minus one if you fail to att attach the requested shared memory. So in the case of failure, minus one is returned. Otherwise, the address of shared memory is returned and which we stored it, stored in the pointer SHM PTR. Now let's look 
at the fourth step which was detaching so it's pretty simple you just write shmdt and the pointer right so while detaching you use the pointer and the fifth step is deleting oh, okay one more thing shmdt returns uh, any value which is not equal to zero in case of failure okay the last step is deleting the shared memory and for that we write shmctl and ctl means controls so shared memory controls so shmctl and then we pass the shared memory id to it then a flag which is ipc remove id and then none so this is how it is deleted i would like to um, specify one more thing in the steps of um, the shared memory in the steps of the server side programming you can see that the first step is opposite of the last step so in the first step it is create and in the last step we are deleting the shared memory second step is the opposite of second last step in the second step we are attaching in the second last step we are detaching so if you keep that in mind it's easy to remember okay so now that we have uh, looked into the um, details of all the steps let's look at the code and see the steps more formally.